software is programmed instructions stored in the memory of stored program digital computers for execution by the processor. Software is a recent development in human history, and fundamental to the information age. Ada Lovelace's work for Charles Babbage's analytical engine in the 19th century is often considered the founding of the discipline, though both mathematicians' efforts remained theoretical only, as the technology of Babbage's day proved insufficient to build his computer. Alan Turing is credited with being the first person to come up with a theory for software in 1935, which led to the two academic fields of computer science and software engineering. The first generation of software for early stored program digital computers in the late 1940s had its instructions written directly in binary code, generally written for mainframe computers. Later, the development of modern programming languages alongside the advancement of the home computer would greatly widen the scope and breadth of available software, beginning with assembly language, and continuing on through functional programming and object-oriented programming paradigms. Before stored program digital computers Topic. Origins of computer science Computing as a concept goes back to ancient times, beginning with devices such as the abacus and continuing on through early examples of computing such as the Antikythera mechanism. However, these devices were pure hardware and had no software, their computing powers were directly tied to their specific form and engineering. Software requires the concept of a general-purpose processor, what is now described as a Turing machine, as well as computer memory in which reusable sets of routines and mathematical functions comprising programs can be stored, started, and stopped individually, and only appears recently in human history. The first known computer algorithm was written by Ada Lovelace in the 19th century for her friend and collaborator Charles Babbage's planned analytical engine, to translate Luigi Menabrea's work on Bernoulli numbers for machine instruction. However, this remained theoretical only, the lesser state of electrical engineering in the lifetime of these two mathematicians proved insufficient to construct the analytical engine. The first modern theory of software was proposed by Alan Turing in his 1935 essay Computable Numbers with an Application to the Entscheidungsproblem decision problem. This eventually led to the creation of the twin academic fields of computer science and software engineering, which both study software and its creation. Computer science is more theoretical Turing's essay is an example of computer science, whereas software engineering is focused on more practical concerns. However, prior to 1946, software as we now understand it, programs stored in the memory of stored program digital computers, did not yet exist. The very first electronic computing devices were instead rewired in order to reprogram them. Computers like the ENIAC, were programmed largely by women who had been previously working as human computers. Engineers would give the programmers blueprints of the ENIAC wiring and expected them to figure out how to program the machine. The women who worked as programmers prepped the ENIAC for its first public reveal, writing the code for the demonstrations. Kathleen Booth developed assembly language in 1950 to make it easier to program the computers she worked on at Birkbeck College. Grace Hopper worked as one of the first programmers of the Harvard Mark I. She later created a 500-page manual for the computer. Hopper often is credited with coining the terms bug and debugging when she found a moth in the Mark II, causing a malfunction. But the term was already in use when she found the moth. 
Hopper developed the first compiler and brought her idea from working on the Mark computers to working on Univac in the 1950s. Hopper also developed the programming language Flow Modich to program the Univac. Francis E. Holberton, also working at Univac, developed a code, C10, which let programmers use keyboard inputs and created the sort merge generator in 1951. Adele Mildred Koss and Hopper also created the precursor to a report generator. Topic: <laughs> Early Days of Computer Software, 1948 to 1979. In his manuscript, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, Claude Shannon 1916 provided an outline for how binary logic could be implemented to program a computer. Subsequently, the first computer programmers used binary code to instruct computers to perform various tasks. Nevertheless, the process was very arduous. Computer programmers had to enter long strings of binary code to tell the computer what data to store. Computer programmers had to load information onto computers using various tedious mechanisms, including flicking switches or punching holes at predefined positions in cards and loading these punched cards into a computer. With such methods, if a mistake was made, the whole program might have to be loaded again from the beginning. The very first time a stored program computer held a piece of software in an electronic memory, and executed it successfully, was 11 a.m., 21 June 1948, at the University of Manchester, on the Manchester Baby Computer. It was written by Tom Kilburn, and calculated the highest factor of the integer 2 to the power of 18 equals 262144 starting with a large trial divisor it performed division of 262144 by repeated subtraction then checked if the remainder was 0 if not it decremented the trial divisor by 1 and repeated the process google released a tribute to the manchester baby celebrating it as the birth of software in the late 1950s and early 1960s, a popular innovation was the development of computer languages such as Fortran, COBOL and BASIC. These languages allowed programs to be specified in an abstract way, independent of the precise details of the hardware architecture of the computer. The languages were primarily intended only for specifying numerical calculations. COBOL was first conceived of when Mary Kay Hawes convened a meeting, which included Grace Hopper, in 1959 to discuss how to create a computer language to be shared between businesses. Hopper's innovation with COBOL was developing a new symbolic way to write programming. Her programming was self documenting. Betty Holberton helped edit the language which was submitted to the government printing office in 1960. Formic was developed by Jean E. Samet in the 1960s. Her book, Programming Languages, History and Fundamentals 1969, became an influential text. <laughs> Equals. The Apollo mission to the Moon depended on software to program the computers in the landing modules. The computers were programmed with a language called BASIC. The software also had an interpreter which was made up of a series of routines and an executive, which specified which programs to run and when. Both were designed by Hal Laning. Margaret Hamilton, who had previously been involved with software reliability issues when working on the U.S. SAGE air defense system, was also part of the Apollo software team. Hamilton was in charge of the onboard flight software for the Apollo computers. 
Hamilton felt that software operations were not just part of the machine, but also intricately involved with the people who operated the software. Hamilton also coined the term, software engineering. While she was working at NASA, the actual software for the computers in the Apollo missions was made up of wires that were threaded through magnetic cores. Where the wire went through a magnetic core, that represented a one, and where the wire went around the core, that represented a zero. Each core stored 64 bits of information. Hamilton and others would create the software by punching holes in punch cards, which were then later processed on a Honeywell mainframe where the software could be simulated. When the code was solid, then it was sent to be woven into the magnetic cores at Raytheon, where women known as little old ladies worked on the wires. The program itself was indestructible and could even withstand lightning strikes, which happened to Apollo 12. Wiring the computers took several weeks to do, freezing software development during that time. While using the simulators to test the programming, Hamilton discovered ways that code could produce dangerous errors when human mistakes were made while using it. NASA believed that the astronauts would not make mistakes due to their training. Hamilton was not allowed to program code to prevent errors that would lead to system crash, so she notated the code in the program documentation. Her ideas to add error checking code was rejected as excessive. However, exactly what Hamilton predicted would happen occurred on the Apollo 8 flight, when human error caused the computer to wipe out all of the navigational data. <laughs> Topic. Bundling of software with hardware and its legal issues Equals. Later, software was sold to multiple customers by being bundled with the hardware by original equipment manufacturers OEMs such as Data General, Digital Equipment and IBM. When a customer bought a minicomputer, at that time the smallest computer on the market, the computer did not come with pre-installed software, but needed to be installed by engineers employed by the OEM. This bundling attracted the attention of U.S. antitrust regulators, who sued IBM for improper tying in 1969, alleging that it was an antitrust violation that customers who wanted to obtain its software had to also buy or lease its hardware in order to do so. Although the case was dropped by the U.S. Justice Department after many years of attrition as without merit, Data General also encountered legal problems related to bundling, although in this case, it was due to a civil suit from a would-be competitor. When Data General introduced the Data General Nova, a company called Digidine wanted to use its RDOS operating system on its own hardware clone. Data General refused to license their software and claimed their bundling rights. The U.S. Supreme Court set a precedent called Digidine v. Data General in 1985 by letting a Ninth Circuit appeal court decision on the case stand, and Data General was eventually forced into licensing the operating system because it was ruled that restricting the license to only DG hardware was an illegal tying arrangement. Even though the district court noted that no reasonable juror could find that within this large and dynamic market with much larger competitors. Data General had the market power to restrain trade through an illegal tie in arrangement. The tying of the operating system to the hardware was ruled as per se illegal on appeal. In 2008, Systar Corporation was sued by Apple Inc. for distributing unauthorized Macintosh clones with OS X pre installed, and countersued. 
One of the arguments in the countersuit, citing the Data General case, was that Apple dominates the market for OS X compatible computers by illegally tying the operating system to Apple computers. District Court Judge William Alsop rejected this argument, saying, as the District Court had ruled in the Data General case over 20 years prior, that the relevant market was not simply one operating system Mac OS but all PC operating systems, including Mac OS, and noting that Mac OS did not enjoy a dominant position in that broader market. Alsip's judgment also noted that the surprising data general precedent that tying of copyrighted products was always illegal had since been implicitly overruled by the verdict in the Illinois Tool Works Inc. v. Independent Inc. Inc. case. Equals. Topic: Unix 1970s present. Equals. Unix was an early operating system which became popular and very influential, and still exists today. The most popular variant of Unix today is Mac OS, previously OS X and Mac OS X, while Linux is closely related to Unix. Equals. Topic: The rise of microcomputers. Equals. In January 1975, Micro Instrumentation and Telemetry Systems began selling its Altair 8800 microcomputer kit by mail order. Microsoft released its first product Altair Basic later that year, and hobbyists began developing programs to run on these kits. Tiny Basic was published as a type in program in Dr. Dobbs' journal, and developed collaboratively. In 1976, Peter R. Jennings, for instance, created his Microchis program for MOS Technologies Kim 1 kit, but since it did not come with a tape drive, he would send the source code in a little booklet to his mail order customers, and they would have to type the whole program in by hand. In 1978, Keita and Dan Spracklin released the source of their Sargon chess program in a computer magazine. Jennings later switched to selling paper tape, and eventually compact cassettes with the program on it. It was an inconvenient and slow process to type in source code from a computer magazine, and a single mistyped, or worse, misprinted, character could render the program inoperable. However, even with the spread of cartridges and cassette tapes in the 1980s for distribution of commercial software, free programs such as simple educational programs for the purpose of teaching programming techniques were still often printed, because it was cheaper than making and attaching cassette tapes to magazines. However, eventually a combination of four factors brought this practice of printing complete source code listings of entire programs in computer magazines to an end. Programs started to become very large. Floppy disks started to be used for distributing software, and then came down in price. Regular people started to use computers, and wanted a simple way to run a program. Computer magazines started to include cassette tapes or floppy disks with free or trial versions of software on them. Topic: 1980s present. Before the microcomputer, a successful software program typically sold up to 1000 units at $50,000 minus 60,000 each. By the mid-1980s, personal computer software sold thousands of copies for $50 minus 700 each. Companies like Microsoft, Micropro, and Lotus Development had tens of millions of dollars in annual sales. 
They similarly dominated the European market with localized versions of already successful products. A pivotal moment in computing history was the publication in the 1980s of the specifications for the IBM personal computer published by IBM employee Philip Don Estridge, which quickly led to the dominance of the PC in the worldwide desktop and later laptop markets, a dominance which continues to this day. Free and open source software <inaudible> Recent developments <inaudible> App stores Applications for mobile devices cell phones and tablets have been termed apps in recent years. Apple chose to funnel iPhone and iPad app sales through their app store, and thus both vet apps, and get a cut of every paid app sold. Apple does not allow apps which could be used to circumvent their app store e.g. virtual machines such as the Java or Flash virtual machines. The Android platform, by contrast, has multiple app stores available for it, and users can generally select which to use although Google Play requires a compatible or rooted device. This move was replicated for desktop operating systems with GNOME software for Linux, the Mac App Store for Mac OS, and the Windows Store for Windows. All of these platforms remain, as they have always been, non-exclusive, they allow applications to be installed from outside the App Store, and indeed from other App Stores. The explosive rise in popularity of apps, for the iPhone in particular but also for Android, led to a kind of gold rush with some hopeful programmers dedicating a significant amount of time to creating apps in the hope of striking it rich. As in real gold rushes, not all of these hopeful entrepreneurs were successful. <laughs> Formalization of software development The development of curricula in computer science has resulted in improvements in software development. Components of these curricula include Structured and object-oriented programming Data structures Analysis of algorithms Formal languages and compiler construction Computer graphics algorithms Sorting and searching Numerical methods, optimization and statistics Artificial intelligence and machine learning <laughs> How software has affected hardware As more and more programs enter the realm of firmware, and the hardware itself becomes smaller, cheaper and faster as predicted by Moore's law, an increasing number of types of functionality of computing first carried out by software, have joined the ranks of hardware, as for example with graphics processing units, however, the change has sometimes gone the other way for cost or other reasons, as for example with soft modems and microcode. Most hardware companies today have more software programmers on the payroll than hardware designers, since software tools have automated many tasks of printed circuit board PCB engineers. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Computer software and programming language timeline. The following tables include year-by-year -year development of many different aspects of computer software including High-level languages Operating systems Networking software and applications Computer graphics hardware, algorithms and applications Spreadsheets Word processing Computer-aided design 
Topic: 1971 to 1974. Topic: 1975 to 1978. Topic: 1979 to 1982. Topic: 1983 to 1986. Topic: 1987 to 1990. Topic: 1991 to 1994. Topic: 1995 to 1998. Topic nineteen ninety nine to two thousand two. Topic two thousand three to two thousand six. Topic two thousand seven to twenty ten. Topic twenty eleven to twenty fourteen. Topic See also Forensic Software Engineering, History of Computing Hardware, History of Operating Systems, History of Software Engineering List of failed and overbudget custom software projects Women in computing Timeline of women in computing <laughs>